On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty. It's an oath Boy Scouts know. To God and my country. To obey the Scout law. The Boy Scout pledge. That a Boy Scout will do his best to do his duty and to keep himself morally straight. But the iconic American organization may itself have been betraying that oath, keeping quiet about unthinkable acts against children. He stole my boy. Like the pedophile priest in the Catholic Church and the Penn State abuse scandal, it's institutional secrecy and a culture of concealment. And they were doing so to protect the name Boy Scouts of America. Tonight, the Scripps National Investigative Team reveals a disturbing pattern of crimes against children that many times went unreported by the Boy Scouts, where sexual abusers were quietly kicked out, able to victimize other children. All of this could have been prevented a long time ago. We're on their trail, the trail of betrayal. Sir, why are you running away? You think your kids are safe. Veronica Aiken's son Chance joined the Boy Scouts in Amarillo, Texas, but what happened next stunned her. We didn't know anything until actually the police came knocking on my door. The police told her this man, Scout leader Melvin Estes, had sexually assaulted her son at scouting events along with three other boys in 1988. Estes was later convicted of his crimes. It's still painful. I don't know that it ever really goes away. Veronica Akins is just one of thousands of voices telling painful stories about molesters in the Boy Scouts. For six months, this group of journalists with the Scripps National Investigative Team reviewed 30,000 court-ordered release documents spanning two decades, most of them dealing with molesters in the Scouts. Now tonight, we're uncovering the sheer magnitude of what's in those files. It's a story they never wanted you to hear. They were sitting on a powder keg of information. Between 1970 and 1991, the files contained the cases of more than 1,800 individuals that the Boy Scouts deemed ineligible to serve for a number of reasons, the majority for claims they molested children. And the files reveal allegations of at least 2,000 Boy Scouts molested by Scout leaders all across the nation. Tim Kosnoff is a Seattle attorney who represents a number of Boy Scout victims. The Boy Scouts of America betrayed the trust that was granted to them by the American public. I'm a 14-year-old Boy Scout. Our Scoutmaster has had to leave our troop from molesting two of our younger Scouts. In 1987, 14-year-old Adam Schertzel wrote this letter to the scouting magazine Boy's Life. He's now 39. He molested them physically and possibly us mentally. And Adam wasn't the only Scout asking for help. In 1976, two St. Louis Scouts wrote to the Scout Committee chairman, complaining that they were being molested by their Scoutmaster. The chairman writes back, quote, can't do anything about it. In cases where Scout officials were first informed of sexual abuse, our investigation reveals the Boy Scouts failed to report it to authorities 72% of the time. In 1983, Boy Scout officials were told by parents that this man, Paul Kofoot, allegedly sexually molested their 11-year-old boy at an Evanston, Illinois camp. The Boy Scouts didn't go to authorities. The only repercussion for Kofoot was to be booted out as a scout leader. How could you let somebody like that go and not do something about it? I mean, you're letting a pedophile go? A scout official in a letter to Kofoot told him the matter would be, quote, maintained as confidential. And we uncovered 146 cases where the Boy Scouts assured scout leaders accused of molesting boys that the matters would be kept confidential. I mean, the Boy Scouts, wow. Sean McPherson, who lives in Nebraska, knows exactly who Paul Kofoot is. But Sean wasn't ever a Boy Scout. Kofoot sexually molested Sean as a 13-year-old, eight years after the Boy Scouts failed to report Kofoot to police. Sean never knew about the Boy Scouts' allegations against Kofoot until we showed him. All of this with me and with these other kids could have even been prevented a long time ago. Sean's parents reported this case to police. He was convicted and is now a registered sex offender in Nebraska. And all of these men were reported to the Boy Scouts for allegedly molesting scouts, but the scouts didn't call authorities. Each man later caught and convicted for other sex offenses, mainly with children. Like former Virginia Scout leader Michael Eck, in 1991 he admitted to inappropriate sexual behavior with scouts. Again, scout officials didn't call police. They simply barred him from scouting. Three years later, he was convicted of sexual battery in a different case. You're Michael Eck, right? 
The Boy Scouts never held you accountable, did they, sir? His case and the others raised serious questions for the Boy Scouts of America. There wasn't a, 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 a culture of secrecy in those files? You mean a culture of secrecy in pr protecting bad people? No. Boy Scouts of America President Wayne Perry believes overall the confidential file system has worked. It protected a lot of kids. A lot of kids. Uh, absolutely. But he also says it didn't protect all kids and for the first time concedes. It is a terrible failure. It's a moral failure. The Boy Scouts released a report last month from a paid contractor that looked into those confidential files. The report concludes the Boy Scouts prevented at least 175 suspected abusers from becoming Boy Scout leaders. Now, tomorrow night, we're looking into systematic failures that allowed some offenders to move from troop to troop. I'm Scripps National Investigative Correspondent Jim Osman in Washington.